Okay, this is Tom Gabriel Warrior, formerly of Hellhammer Celtic Frost, now Trypticon and Triumph of Death, and you're listening to Heavy Demons Radio Show. <coughs> so, dear Tom, how are you experiencing this weird uh, sanitary emergency era? Well, uh, nothing special, um, just like every other human being, and also like every other musician, uh, I'm stuck at home. Um, now in Switzerland, uh, the situation is becoming a little more relaxed, but um, it remains to be seen if, it, if this is too early. And as far as, as uh, our concerts, of course, everything has been cancelled, uh, both uh, Trypticon as well as Triumph of Death. Um, our concert agency is trying very, very hard, together with the promoters, to uh, reschedule everything. And so far, it looks very good that all the concerts are simply postponed uh, to a year from now, but uh, of course it's, uh, it's a difficult time um, both for, for our audience and for the band. Let's talk about the Trypticon with the Metropole Orchestra. We've got Requiem. What can you tell us about this adventurous project? It, it's more than 30 years old, uh, the idea, the concept. And what can you tell us about the, the genesis, the evolution and the actual realization, especially of the composition of um, Grave Eternal? Well, it's it's 30 years old, but, but in, a, in a way it also remained a, a very fresh idea for all of us over the years. Yeah. Because Martin Ain and I talked about it very often, and we, we had every intention to finish it with Celtic Frost. Um, so we worked on it on and off, and we talked about it many, many times uh, over the years. And uh, when Martin died, of course, I f- felt the obligation and, and the, the wish to finish it also as a way to pay tribute to him as a... As, uh, as a, a form of memorial to him. And uh, when Roeburn Festival approached me in uh, 2017, shortly after Martin Eric Gaines' death, and, and uh, asked me to put on stage a classical uh, uh, collaboration, metal and classical music, yeah. I suggested to them that we combine the two ideas, that we combine uh, their concept and, and uh, the Celtic Frost Requiem. And, and this is basically how the whole thing started. And as for um, Grave Eternal, I, I had the rough structure of the piece in my mind for many years. Yeah. Uh, some of it even dates back to the 80s. I always had a rough idea of what the Requiem should be like. But uh, once I had to go ahead from the Rope Burn Festival, uh, I sat down and, and actually wrote it in, in earnest with adding a, a million details to it, of course. A requiem means Mass for the Dead. How did you approach this subject? I mean, lyrically speaking as well. Well, you know, I mean, you know as well as I do, the, the topic of death is not uh, something unusual for yeah. a band in our scene. And uh, more than that, uh, Martin, Eric, Ain and I were, were deeply fascinated by all aspects of the topic of death. Not in, a, in an immature manner, but it was just, to us, death was, was an extension of life. Um, it's, it's such an important topic in, in, in uh, history, in occultism, in religion, in philosophy, that it was just a constant uh, uh, topic of conversation between the two of us ever ever since we met uh, in Hellhammer. Death was always something that fascinated us, and, and uh, we weren't, uh, to us it wasn't a taboo, we weren't afraid to talk about it. We felt, we felt it was a part of every individual's uh, existence. And, and we were really interested in, in uh, seeing, for example, how it was approached in, in, in earlier centuries, how it influenced uh, religion and so on, how it influenced world history. Yeah. And, and of course, the, the combination of the topic death and our music was very obvious uh, in many songs. And, and the, the idea of a death mask, once we became better musicians, the idea of a death mask was, was very intriguing to us. So we, we simply decided to try it. You recorded both the dress rehearsal and the concert of Requiem, I mean. There are many physical formats of the album. What do you think about the physical aspect of music nowadays in this digital era? I think um, it has always been very important, but it has become even more important uh, in recent years. Um, when I was a young uh, heavy metal fan, I, I liked um, 
I liked albums where I had the feeling that as a fan, I was really receiving something from my money. For example, uh, gatefold albums or albums with a booklet or a poster. So to, to me, it was always very important that the band paid great attention to the physical format. And of course, nowadays, where the recording industry is completely transformed and is struggling with the reality of streaming and digital releases, I think it has become even more important that you provide the audience with with a, a, a really extensive package. If somebody decides to spend money on, on music nowadays, to me, that's, that's a, a gift. And then that person should be rewarded by yeah. a, a beautiful product. Uh, I'm a collector and I'm a fan myself, and I like to have a, a beautiful gatefold album or a beautiful box set in my in my bookshelf, of course. So I, I of course, approach our own uh, releases like that. Uh, having said that, um, I often have the feeling it's a bit much nowadays. Um, mostly it's record companies because they really know the audience, they really know the market, and they propose uh, we should do this format and that format, and, and that. They, all, they all look really nice, but I think there's also a point when it becomes a bit much, and uh, this is always a, a topic of discussion between us and Century Media. Um, of course, I'm, I'm happy if some, somebody buys our albums, but I also don't need to do 10 million different versions of it. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm a bit torn. I'm a bit uh, uh, in the middle of this as a, as a as a musician on one hand and as a fan on the other hand. Talking about the visual aspect, what can you tell us about the amazing artwork by Daniele Valeriani? Well, Daniele is is a friend of mine. He's a, a phenomenal artist, and he's he's he has a very unusual style in that. His, when you see his art, it looks it looks like it, it it's from earlier centuries. He he doesn't do contemporary art, yeah. at least as far as I know. Uh, and I really love his his reimagination of of uh, of ancient art. Uh, I was deeply taken by some of his his uh, paintings that had occult theme themes, and I contacted him quite some time ago and and, and proposed to him that that he worked with Triptychon and he was very excited about that. And uh, I, I uh, purchased the rights to the Blood Angel, which is now the cover of the Requiem, yeah. uh, even uh, before we, we knew we were going to do the Requiem. And once we, once we worked on the Requiem, I, I looked at this painting. Now, I, I personally felt it was absolutely perfect for what the Requiem represents, the whole atmosphere of the piece. So uh, I talked to the band and we all decided to use the Blood Angel and we approached Daniele for a second piece of art that also fits perfectly, which is now the inside of the Gapefold uh, album and also the cover of the art book okay. version. Um, I, I, uh, I really worship Daniele and I think we're going to work together again in the future. I know it must be very hard to answer, but which are the first positive thing and the first negative thing that come to your mind thinking about the early days with Celtic Frost? The first positive thing is that it was a very magical time in, in our scene. Heavy metal had just uh, rejuvenated itself with the power of the new wave of British heavy metal. And it was a very exciting scene. Every time you went to a record store, you discovered albums that that truly changed your life. Uh, every time you went to a record store, you, 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 you were exposed to an album like you never heard it before in your life. And, and that what made the scene very, very exciting. Uh, and it, it was a privilege to be a musician at the time. Um, the negative thing, of course, uh, would be um, the relationship between Celtic Frost and the noise records. Uh, we trusted noise records very much and we thought it was a label full of possibilities. We would have gone to the end of the world with this with this label, but um, they chose to to be deceptive. They chose to issue really uh, flawed contracts to their bands, and uh, unfortunately, it hurt the label and it hurt the bands. And it's it's a pity. Uh, they lost a lot of good bands, including Celtic Frost. Whereas in originally, everybody really wanted to work with them. They could have gone really far with all these bands. While talking about uh, Triumph of Death, uh, the band that resurrected uh, Hellhammer's music, do you think you might record uh, a live gig in the future? Oh, we have recorded several live concerts uh, last year. And uh, later this year, I will look at this material and uh, take the best songs and mix, it, mix them and, and uh, 
we plan on releasing maybe uh, two or three live EPs with the best of these songs. And, and we also certainly will record some of, of our future concerts, definitely. Which memories can you share with us of uh, Ha'ar Giga? How was he as a person? Um, everybody expects him to be uh, this really dark and, and uh, maybe even sick person, but he was actually a very kind, humorous and big-hearted person. Um, he was he was very interesting. Uh, he had a very v unique personality. He had a very morbid humor, and uh, he was very generous. If if uh, if he saw that somebody is in need of something, he was a very generous person, uh, a very good-hearted person, actually. What kind of music are you listening to in your free time when you're free from Triptychon and the Triumphant Death duties? Oh, I listen to all kinds of music from. Uh, classical music to to jazz to 1970s hippie music to to gothic to electronic to hard rock and, and metal uh, i listen to a very very wide variety of music um it's probably because uh, uh extreme metal is is uh, what i do with Triptychon. so uh at home i'm looking for maybe something slightly different What do you recall about the heritage, I mean the legacy that uh, Celtic Frost Hammer left uh, way back in the early 90s in the black metal scene, uh, especially in, in Norway? That's a very difficult topic and, and it probably takes a book to, to analyze yeah. that. Um, if I simplify it, I can say, of course, I'm, I feel very flattered and very honored that... that uh, My bands, Hellhammer and Celtic Frost, have been mentioned uh, very often by the black metal scene. It's an absolute honor for for a small band out of Switzerland to to be mentioned as a as a one of the inspirations for a new scene. And a lot of that music that came from that scene or comes from that scene is is phenomenal and has changed our our, our uh, the heavy metal scene the, uh, massively. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, there were also some some events that took place in Scandinavia in the early 1990s that I personally find extremely unfortunate and, and uh, that I don't agree with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I find it very difficult to accept that, that uh, we are quoted as an influence uh, for the scene that has committed these things. Um, Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult topic that would probably take a lot more than, than that yeah, to, to uh, properly uh, be, dis to be described properly. Do you know or like any Italian band or musician? Um, well, of course. I, I actually, one of, of, of the most in, important influences on early Celtic Frost um, uh, was uh, Goblin, yeah. uh, which is a band I still uh, adore a lot. Um, Also, I also love Paul Chain, for example, and, and, and there's a whole whole bunch of Italian bands that are uh, phenomenal. But these two bands, I think these two bands had a, uh, a quite a dramatic uh, impact on, on uh, late Hellhammer and early Celtic Frost, for example. Do you have one message and greeting that you would send out to the Italian fans of Triptychon? Uh, uh, all I can say is uh, that I'm extremely grateful after uh, 39 years uh, as a musician that there's an audience who has been willing to go this path with me and who is still following me and is still listening to my music. It's not something I take for granted and it makes me feel extremely grateful and honored that, that this is the case and uh, I really try to do my best and release interesting music for them as uh, to give them something back. I would be nothing without my audience. I, I would still be in a wet stinky rehearsal room like I was many many years ago without without people giving my music a chance as uh, the audience we hope and expect to see you on stage once this uh, sanitary emergency is over well I hope that the very same um, the last concert I had in, in Italy in, in Parma the audience was fantastic and uh, I definitely would love to repeat that <laughs>